everybody get up. Hey all of you guys out there in guitar world. This is a song called Blurred Lines. Now I do this song as pretty much to take the mickey out of myself when I did it, but it just went off when I played it. Had the whole dance floor full of people dancing to just me and my guitar, it was crazy. Um, I'm gonna play a little bit of it for you and then I'm gonna show you how to play it. It's pretty simple, but I'll give you a little demo right now. idea of it. So this is Blurred Lines and the song goes on and on. It's a cool, cool song. It makes me laugh. One of my favourite tunes to get. Uh, have a few drinks too, just on the sly. Um, so it has a cool little groove going on it and it's um, that's the main body of the guitar part of it. Very simply it starts off with just three notes on the G. In my case it's in the key of G. It's probably a little bit high still for me but so we're just playing three notes on the G on the G note, which is the third fret on the sixth string. Just a simple note. What I'm doing is releasing the note after I play it. If I don't release it, it'll sound like this. And it doesn't sound like the song. We need it to be short notes. So releasing the note. And when you release the note, you don't have to go right off. You just have to lift the note slightly to stop it from ringing. One, two, three. Everybody get up. I don't know if anyone's laughing out there because it's a Kiwi trying to be American and still trying to be cool, but I'm not. And I don't know if these, you can see the irony in that, but. So we've got the uh, 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 And then we've got after that, it's, it's all in bar chords. The reason it's in bar chords is so we can, we can stop the notes from ringing. Without bar chords, you've got open strings and the notes will tend to ring. Whereas you can get this cool little uh, sort of scar rhythm thing happening. So what we're doing there is we're doing the chords of G7 and then we're working our way up, up to a D7. It's pretty much just G7 and D7 are the, are the chords in it and there's a little bit of... Uh, this sort of thing happens as well. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So with a G7 chord, the, the notes for that, three, five, three, four, three, three, okay? And the way I'm playing that is I'm playing a bass note down on the bass note, which is the top string and I'm doing the bottom strings. I'm only aiming at a few strings, but I've got my whole chord down just in case. I hit a few other strings in case I hit all of them. So it sounds nice. But I'm really only wanting to get just a few notes, the bottom say four strings out of the chord. And then once I play the upstroke, I release the chord. slow down exactly what I'm doing there because the right hand is quite important there but basically every time I do an upstroke I'm playing the chord and I'm playing then I'm releasing the chord but I'm strumming the strings and releasing the chord I'm putting the chord on again for the upstroke releasing on off on off on off so perhaps that might be a, a starting point for you is just to practice going up with the chord on and then releasing for the on the way down but so that you get that sort of percussive effect on the way down So that, that would be one bar. One bar would be the bass note, and then four of the upstrokes. One, and, 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 and. The trick to that is getting the bass note to happen at the one, because you have to put pressure on for the one and the upstroke, and then after that have our releasing happening. I'll show you what I mean. It's pressure's on, off, on, on, on. That takes a little bit of practice to get used to, so we can get the, the groove happening. Then after that, we've got a little thing happening, which is a C7, C sharp seven, D7. But I'm just going down, up, down. And then we're doing the upstrokes again. You see a little thing I'm doing there, a little on off thing here, which is quite cool to do as well. So what's happening is I'm going down, up, down, which is C, C sharp seven, so D7, 
The notes for C7, by the way, it's the same bar chord moved up. Three, five, oh, this is on from the fifth string. Three, five, three, five, three. And I'm going down, up, down, and I'm doing up, to up, up, exactly as we were for the G7. Up, 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 except we're going to do a, we're going to do a strum of all the chords. We're going to strum from a C sharp seven and let it fall over into the, into the uh, D7 chord. So that's something else to practice. So the basics of it is G7. And you can do the same thing with the G7 if you want to, that little slide. Or you can just keep it simple. Okay, and that releasing thing is the hardest thing to do. It's pretty advanced, but the chords are very simple. So it makes it all about what's happening with the groove. Now I'll slow that right down in case you're looking at that and going, hang on a minute, whoa, 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 what's this right hand, what's going on there? Slowing it right down, just the G7, okay? Now if you watch the right hand, it's just tick-tocking. If you don't know what tick-tocking is, you need to check out my other videos. We'll go to jamarama.com and you'll see, we'll get my full course on how to play guitar like a boss. And you'll see a lot of these techniques and that you're seeing right now, you'll find it way easier. So that's, that, that's what's going on with the right hand. And the same with the D7. Now, if you can't quite see it, but behind the neck here, my thumb is on and off like crazy, giving me the pressure, taking off the pressure, giving the pressure, taking it off. It's pretty much my thumb coming all the way off. And when I say coming off, it's coming off like a couple of centimeters off the guitar. Like it's actually not exaggerating, it's actually doing that behind the guitar there to take the pressure off, put the pressure back on the chord, take it off, put it back on, okay? So. Now there's one other thing that we need to learn for this, which is that, that little run there. Now that's really cool to play and it's really simple. It's just down up strokes, down up for each note, for each position. The way I'm playing that, first string on the fifth fret on the fifth string, little finger, in this case my little finger, is, in, is playing the octave, which is on the seventh fret of the third string, okay? And we just keep that shape and move down the guitar. Down up, down to the sec, uh, third fret, so that's gonna be the third fret and fifth fret. Same strings, second fret and fourth fret. Now the next one's a bit different because it's an A chord, where first finger comes down, so it's zero and, and second fret, so first finger takes over that role of what your little finger was doing. One more time. And then we're back to the G. So we're working our way from the D7 on our way down. Uh, uh. And that's the way I like to play that. a little bit of that again. Here we go. Not that accurate, but you've got the idea. One more time through it again. Here it is from the D7. One more of those. Here we go. get the idea so quite a cool little progression hey it's just having fun and if it doesn't sound amazing who cares but there's a lot of cool techniques happening in there that are going to really help your guitar playing so have some fun with that go and check me out if you want to find out the real deal on how to play guitar like an absolute boss then go and check out jamarama.com there's some cool free stuff you can go and check out and get your confidence up if you're not willing to pay any money just yet. Otherwise, you've got Mark the Guitar Guy channel and you've got uh, my cool as boss songs that you can also learn. Great to see you. Please subscribe and I'd love to see you again. Catch you later.